<laughs> awesome. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our our part three in our series of Platonic Touch. And I'm so happy to be here with my dear, dear friend, Mary Beth. Mary Beth is one of my absolute favorite people to cuddle with. <laughs> so if my brain seems a little fuzzy today, it's because I get a little mushy around her. <laughs> and a little extra giggly. Same, same. That's perfect. <laughs> so Mary Beth is a, an energy worker, a healer, an esthetician, and she is... Um, what I would call a visionary. I tell her I'm not this. sure what that actually means. <laughs> I'll just... Yeah. It's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use that word lightly. <laughs> so, um, today specifically, we're talking about um, some of the things that could come up with platonic touch. In the previous weeks, we talked about in the first video, we set the groundwork for what is platonic touch, and then the second uh, meeting, we talked about how to, so like boundaries and how to create the safe space and consent and these really important foundational things. And then this meeting, we're going to talk about some of the challenges that might come up, and then our conversation may spiral into just whatever, because right. I hope that you all have lose. questions. So, mm. yeah. So let's just jump right in. Um, and I was hoping, so, so Mary, in your work as an esthetician, you're touching people's faces. Yeah. What have so, you learned from that? I've been an esthetician for over nine years, I think. Um, I've touched mostly women, hundreds of women. Um, during a facial, I massage the face and then I... I touch people on their chest and like their arms and neck and stuff. Um, I, every time I'm, you know, giving a facial, I feel like it's super intimate. Um, and it's in this quiet room and it's dark and there's candles lit. And most of the time, you know, it's strangers that I'd, I've never met before. And um, so I think. I feel really lucky to be doing this kind of work. I feel um, I'm more interested in like helping people just relax and shutting off their brains. And um, it's just, it's really interesting because most of the women that come in talk about how they don't really receive touch in other ways. Um, and so, yeah, it's just really interesting, um, and I feel like I receive something out of it as well. Um, there's like a giving and a taking of energy, like whether people know it or not. Um, so yeah, I feel really, yeah, grateful and people always leave feeling lighter and that is awesome. <laughs> and like, there's not a lot of communication that happens in these rooms and that's beautiful to me. You mean like verbal communication? Yeah. yeah. It's just energetic and soft and quiet. Um, so yeah, mm. it's pretty amazing. It sounds magical. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes she'll send me, um, like, pictures or little videos of her like while she's working during the day and I feel like I can feel the energy of that space and I just want to be in it with you <laughs> I'm like damn I want to go there <laughs> it is, I forget you know like I I get to work in this sacred space that's like just kind of like this little cave the safe cave and people trust me enough to come in like they're paying me to touch them that's beautiful. I feel really honored. And so most, some of my work is women come in because they're struggling with their skin. Um, but I, uh, I feel like I get more, like I want people to just forget about 
all of that noise, like the outer body, and I want to help them really, like, just be, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Not think about, like, if they have zits on their skin or if they have wrinkles or I just want to, like, help them melt and really be where they are. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. <sighs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So what are some of the, um, when people are experimenting with platonic touch in their lives, like, um, what do you think might be some of the challenges that they might encounter in any respect, like in any, um, hmm. What what are some of the things that you think have have like arisen for you in your maybe more personal like instances with platonic touch? Some of the difficult moments that have come up because so I mean we Mary Beth and I are on the same page like we, we when we are around our close friends we are just usually like touching in so, at some certain points like we believe touch is healing and powerful and. Um, so, you know, when you've been doing this with friends and loved ones, has there, maybe you could share like a story or something that's been like a challenging moment that you worked through with someone? Hmm. I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. I'm struggling to find it. <laughs> um, mostly I just think about like how... In my work, people are paying to have to be touched, and I'm thinking about how um, how it would be like if I just met them on the street and I I offered to touch them in the same way, like if that would make them uncomfortable or if they feel like I don't know why it's I don't know if people feel more comfortable when they're paying for touch or when they're not paying for it, mm. and so like outside of my work, I am very touchy feely. And I touch a lot of the people that I work with, just like walk up to them and just rub their backs or mm -hmm. um, hold their hands. Um, and I, I don't know, I think that, I can't think of like an instance where it was, I've, mm. I don't know, struggled. Do you, I, do you have any moments that you can remember? Mm. Mm. So... Yeah. Um, so th this is like not just one time this has happened, but this is multiple times. Um, in situations with clients that I'm working with um, for Reiki, where they like, how do I put this? Um, the client will basically tell me that they are having sexual feelings come up for me. And I then um, help to guide them to deal with that as it's happening. Right. So, um, How do you? <laughs> so basically, like, first of all, I I want the person to know that if the sexual feelings are coming up, that it's like not a bad thing. Right. It's not a negative thing. It is totally fine. Um, nothing to be ashamed about. And then the um, the magical thing is that when you actually go into the feeling, but you don't feed the feeling, then the, f the sexual feeling actually dissipates. So how you do that is you just, first of all, acknowledge the feeling. Like, sexual feelings are happening now. And then you can, the person who's feeling the sexual feelings can just breathe and actually send the breath into their, like, sexual sparky places. And then, um, and without judgment or without, um, like, labeling too much, but just, like, bringing the breath to that. And then which, with each breath, then what will happen is if you don't actually act on the feeling, but you just breathe into the feeling, but you don't 
um, do what you would normally do, which is like try to kiss someone or um, try to take your clothes off or whatever, <laughs> like take it to the next level or whatever. If you don't do that and you just breathe into it, then what will happen is the feeling will actually just dissipate and it will just go away. So you have to like go That's into huge. it instead mm -hmm. of like getting tense and then running away and freaking out, That's, Yeah, <laughs> which most people do. They do one or the other. It's pretty much the same with all emotions. Yes. <laughs> if you just lean into it and sit with it, yeah, it kind of doesn't have control over you. And you realize that you don't have to, you're more than that. And you can kind of take a step back and see it, but not be drawn into the drama of it. Exactly. So yeah, that's super huge. Yeah. It's a big one. It is. Yeah. <laughs> All I want to do is cuddle right now. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah. So maybe let's take a pause here yeah. and like see if anyone has questions um, or comments on what we have said so far. Hey, Sarah and Terry. Glad you're here. Does anyone want to ask anything about um, potential challenges that they might be facing um, in terms of bringing platonic touch into your life, whether professionally or on a personal level? Please type, typey, type, type <laughs> your comments and questions. <laughs> Um, another thing that I wanted to say was, um, we're like given these amazing, incredible, weird bodies <laughs> to exist in. And, um, I feel like we don't utilize like the awesomeness of that enough. Um, most of us are walking around living inside of our heads and mm -hmm. creating worlds and experiences and even conversations that haven't even happened ever um and so we kind of live in in our heads most of our lives um we forget that we can kind of um step outside of that and just really like be in our bodies and mm. how powerful that is um so if you just like take time and really are like, um, what's the word? Like intentional. You can like touch your skin, uh, massage yourself, massage somebody else, um, tap like soft, yeah, strokes, just all of the amazing things and really feel. Um, it can help you to be present in a way that's know what like nothing else can do yeah um it's super important to be present because it's pretty much every like only thing that's happening and it's um so it's just like yeah that's super huge and in relationships if you're if you're like in a sexual relationship with someone sometimes if you're struggling to find words if you're you know having a disagreement or um yeah are fighting about something to just stop talking because sometimes words mm. um, don't do justice what you're actually feeling. Mm -hmm. So you can just stop talking and just take a night and light incense and mm. light candles and be naked together and just touch each other. And like you can express so much more sometimes through through gentle touch than you can with words. And that has been mm. huge in um, the past couple of years that I've been like learning that and that I can just be like, oh, I don't really want to talk tonight, but I would like to express my feelings through touching you. Is that okay? And then it's like, it's so explosive and it doesn't lead to, it doesn't have to lead to sex. It can just be that mm. and it's, yeah, that's huge. That's been, like, a huge mm -hmm. game changer for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, Terry says, I am a naturally touchy, feely type of person, but I find people here in the Northwest seem to all have this personal bubble thing going. For sure. <laughs> it makes it hard uh, it makes it hard to touch when you have to worry so much about what is politically correct. Oh my gosh, totally. How do you, oh my how, do you have any thoughts on how to deal with that? <laughs> Man. Just, just fuck everybody. <laughs> for judging. Just. I thought you were going to say just fuck everyone like that's the answer. I was like, no. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> But just say, <laughs> you just have to start living from a place that is like, Ugh. like, really, to be your authentic self, you can't, it's so hard, but you can't care about what other people think. Like, they're, I don't know, they're on, everyone's on their own journeys, you know, and like, they've got some, a lot of trauma and like, and we've been like, program to feel these ways and when you start stepping outside of that you realize that why would you take advice from somebody who's still like having these old like living from a place of these old programmed ways yeah um and you can just start sending love to them you know mm -hmm. like if you notice if you're out like i don't know we've been out together walking around and touching and like yeah. It is kind of odd you when know you I see thinking. people looking at you in that way, and you wonder what uh -huh. they're thinking, and uh -huh. what were you thinking? I was thinking about um, this one time, Mary Beth and I, we were um, laying on a blanket near the river, near my house, and it's like a, on this like sort of touristy path, yeah. it's like everyone comes to, to here to, to eat ice cream and look at the river. Have and, family time. Yay! <laughs> It's very quaint. There's, yeah. <laughs> so, like, we were out in, like, full view of lots of people walking past and totally... Okay, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> and, um, like, what was I going to say? Yeah. We were um, out laying on the blanket. Oh, and we were just giving each other, like, these really mm -hmm. beautiful massages. Mm. It was getting very, like, <laughs> amazing, like... You were like floating off into the sky. <laughs> we're just like getting really dry. Like AF, yes, <laughs> yes. for sure. I'm and pretty then, sure you weren't wearing underwear either. I was also not wearing underwear, so I was like, skirt on. I was trying it not was so to show amazing. my crotch to everyone because I was trying to get into these really <laughs> awesome, like, massagey, like straddling her. But anyway, um, but people, Such a beautiful moment. it was, it really was. But I could feel. Um, people watching us and i have to admit it it was like a factor because because ordinarily i would just let my crotch show because yeah. you've seen my crotch right it's fine it's a crotch <laughs> yep. but like i was like okay make sure gotta have the skirt pulled down i don't want to scare anyone too much so it was like the freedom that we felt was like very a lot like we did feel very great but it, it did change it that there was people around with their Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, because I was trying to be, I guess, it's an interesting balance, because I, I do try to be respectful somewhat of the culture that I'm in. Yeah. I know. Because it's like, I don't want to accidentally trauma, be the catalyst for trauma for someone else. But at the same time, it's like, I want to, and someone loves that, I know, but I want to also, um, like, give someone... A glimpse into like a different way of being so it's like how do you balance those two things mm -hmm. well that's hard super hard yeah I think it's like a just an ongoing moment-to-moment -moment balance that you make there's no like set um, prescriptions to that but I do think